David here with Fig Boot on Pens, back again with another stay-at-home fountain pen review. Today I have for you a brand new release from the Russian brand Bennu. It was just launched this week and that pen is called the Scepter. What I'm going to do today is go over the parts and features of the Scepter, talk about what I care for and what I don't care for, I'll show some measurements, size comparisons, and provide a writing sample. Thanks go out to the good folks at Bennu for providing this new release for review. And stay tuned, during the size comparisons, I'm going to show you a very special limited edition artisan offering from Bennu, which was briefly available through their website, but sold out very quickly. Uh, it's something pretty cool that you don't want to miss, and it, I wanted to share with you. Uh, in regard to the scepter, it arrives in this standard Bennu box. Inside, we have this sleeve. Uh, the scepter is actually available in eight different colors, each named with Roman numerals. There is the Model 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, and 8. Uh, the one that we're going to be taking a closer look at today is number 7. Uh, this particular model is blue and purple and yellowish gold, all very regal colors, worthy of inclusion in a scepter. Uh, I think the inclusions in this resin are very interesting. I pulled out the microscope camera to take a closer look. Uh, it looks like little pieces of cellophane, but the different pieces make for some interesting close-up pictures. I like this purple here. It almost looks like a picture of some far-off galaxy. Many of Bennu's offerings typically have a large amount of flair. Uh, they don't produce too many boring pens, and they can be a little bit polarizing. Either you care for the glitz or you don't. I'm personally drawn to the more subtle designs that they have, but I do care for this particular model, even though it's more on the flamboyant side. Uh, the Scepter has a faceted octagonal design with a quarter turn twist and an hourglass shape. Uh, let's take a look at the end of the pen. The multiple facets give the end of this pen a gemstone look to it, which is appropriate since most scepters would have some kind of gem or ornamental finial on the top. The cap is clipless um, and the facets twist and taper until it reaches the cap band. On it, it says the company name of Bennu and it's repeated on both sides of the band. There is a smooth transition from the edge of the band to the barrel, which angles up with the twist, and the end of the barrel mimics the top of the cap with another gemstone cut. Uh, the cap twists off. Uh, the cap has a single thread, which is nice, because that ensures that the facets on the scepter will always match up when capped. Uh, and then here is a look at the nib. Uh, Bennu uses Schmidt nibs. Uh, the nibs are a bit on the small side, about the same size that you're going to find on a Quebeco Skyline Sport. Uh, this particular nib is a broad, signified by the large cursive B in the middle of the nib. Uh, this nib is available in extra fine, fine, medium, and this broad. And here's a look at the plastic feed. The sections on Bennu pens tend to be a bit on the thin side, and the scepter is no exception. The section does begin with a slight flare, and then angles up until it reaches the wide, blocky threads. Then there's a fairly steep step up to the barrel. As I said, this section is a bit thin, coming in at just over 9mm, but I do find the flare helps me maintain a decent grip. And I also find that the step up is set far enough back that it doesn't interfere with my grip. The pen is plenty long enough for me to use comfortably unposted, which is a good thing because the scepter is not designed to post. And even though the pen is a bit back weighted, um, let me see if I can kind of balance the pen here. There, you can see kind of that the majority of the weight is on the back of the pen. Uh, but since this is not the longest pen, the weight at the back of the pen rests against your hand as opposed to throwing off the overall balance. Uh, overall, the barrel is only 19 grams, so it's not overly heavy. It's more about the distribution of that limited weight. Uh, this is a cartridge converter pen. A standard international cartridge is provided, but a converter is not. 
Options will vary by retailer in regard to purchasing a converter, but directly through the Bennu site, they're $5. Uh, since there are no metal parts in this pen, in theory, if you use the appropriate amount of silicone grease, you could eyedropper it if you so desired. The Bennu Scepter retails for $88 and is available directly from the Bennu site, as well as many online retailers worldwide for the very same price. And I actually feel that that is a very reasonable price for what you receive with this model. Uh, the shape and design are unique. Uh, you'll see in the writing sample, but this broad Schmidt nib is very pleasant and smooth. Overall, this is one of the Bennu designs that I care for the most, and uh, I think that it's going to do well for them. Uh, thanks again, go out to Bennu for providing this pen for review. Now it is time for some measurements, size comparisons, a writing sample, and that quick look at another special offering from Bennu that I felt was pretty cool. Here we go with some size comparisons for the Bennu Scepter. Uh, here it is with a Lamy All-Star, then here it is with a Pilot Metropolitan, and then here it is with another somewhat recent Bennu release, which was the Tattoo. In regard to some other pens, here it is with a Caveco Skyline Sport, a Twisby Eco, and then the pen that I wanted to share with you is the Bennu Flame. Let's go ahead and take a closer look at this flame. It's based off of one of Bennu's standard designs, but there is material that's inside of the resin. But then on top of that is this really cool hand-painted flame. This was a limited edition of 30 pens. Uh, and that I think just the, the, the way that the subtle material within the pen uh, complements the flames on the outside, the material inside the pen almost looks like it's the sparks coming off of the flame. But let's get a closer look at this, but it's really cool. And in the future, uh, Bennu has plans to do other limited edition uh, artisan offerings like this, which I think is a good thing. Back to the scepter in regard to some uncapped comparisons. Uh, here it is with the Twisby Eco, and here it is with the Pilot Metropolitan, and then here it is with the Lamy All-Star. In regard to a writing sample, what we have here is the Bennu Scepter. This is a broad stainless steel nib, and the ink that I'm using today is Je Herban Kyanite du Nepal. This is what the ink looks like. Uh, it's a nice solid blue uh, that has a bit of shimmer to it. Uh, this is what it looks like in regard to the Robert Oster Bondi blue, which is one of my favorite blues, as well as the KWZ Hawaii blue. Uh, this is what the bottles look like. I like these 1798 bottles from uh, J. Herban. They just look kind of classy. Uh, you can see a bit of the shimmer here at the bottom that you want to make sure that you shake that up before you ink up your pen. In regard to the rest of the writing sample, You can see that this broad nib is rather generous. You're not going to get a ton of line variation out of this. You can get a bit out of here, though, if you push it. Uh, in regard to ink flow, I do find that this is rather generous in regard to the ink flow. In regard to reverse writing, it works just fine. And then in regard to some fast writing, And there's no issues whatsoever. 
I do find this broad nib to be fairly smooth and very pleasant, uh, and that uh, I do enjoy using this pen a great deal. So here we have the Bennu Scepter. Uh, it's an interesting new offering. I think it has an interesting shape uh, as well as performs very well. So like I mentioned previously, I feel that it's going to do well for Bennu. So until next time, thanks for watching, and I'll talk to you later.